This is New Cap News with Hannah Tita. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Locals walked for workplace safety and now they're riding for it. Following the huge turnout at Steps for Life last month, a brand new event, Treads for Life, took to the streets today. Over 20 bikers participated in a ride around the area to promote safety at work. Josh Ryan has the story. It was quite the entourage Saturday afternoon as bikers from Lloydminster and beyond took part in the first annual Treads for Life bike run. After several years of the Steps for Life walk in the border city, the bike run represents a new branch of community involvement in promoting workplace safety awareness. I don't think the bike community is one that the safety message has um, historically been delivered through. But uh, talk about a group that totally understands safety and, and both taking it personally but also extending it beyond their bike. The run goes from Lloydminster up to Marwayne, then north to Bonnyville before heading back down south to Lloyd through Vermilion. They involve people from North Battleford, this group, and they involve people from Bonneville and, and Vermilion and all over. So this is a really a great model of how you can uh, make things happen. Threads for Life has continued to gain support in the city, but for the bike run's lead marshal Rick Keach and other riders, it's a cause they plan to keep bringing to the forefront. It needs to be out there still. And pe people constantly need to be reminded that uh, for every action that they do, there's a reaction that could be good or bad. Initially, the hope was for at least five bikes on the run. By the time kickstands were up, though, more than 20 riders were present. As soon as the causes come out, um, the people here are just phenomenal with their support. Um, all we have to do is get the information to them. And with the weather we get, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Monroe says to grow Treads for Life, they'll need to gauge people in the community about where to move to next. But one thing's for certain, this may be the first bike ride for workplace safety. It won't be the last. Josh Ryan, New Cap News. This Father's Day weekend is off to a good start across Canada as the car show season begins. And here in the border city, the Service Sports Center parking lot was packed with gorgeous vehicles of all makes and models for the 6th annual Just Cruise and Show and Shine. We're just lovers of vehicles and uh, we see, uh, we go to other shows and we thought it was about time that we started putting some on ourselves and so we wanted to do something different and we have uh, put on a show which we feel is kind of world class similar to what they do in the United States. Countless classic cars as well as some modern imports were on display. They were brought in from all across Alberta and Saskatchewan. Chairman of the show Gary Duhame says close to 280 vehicles were showcased. One of the most unique vehicles that I saw so far today was a little mini uh, tub. It's a little uh, sort of a hot rod uh, vehicle for a child. A uh, guy built it for his nine-year-old to get him interested in hot rods. It's really cool. It's like a little mini tea bucket. The make and take program, as well as a matchbox, matchbox races, rather, kept the kids entertained while mom and dad checked out the cars. The following the show was a car rally with proceeds going towards the MS Society. This is New Cap Sports with Drew Miller. The wagons are back on the track for the second stop of the CPCA season on Friday night. Dewberry was the scene for one hometown hero to shine. Chance Benzmiller in Heat 11 coming off barrel 3 with DJ King on barrel 2 and Evan McGee on barrel 1. And look at Chance Benzmiller turn those barrels and he gets out of the infield first and is able to take over the rail as he goes around the corner 1. Ben's Miller still in the lead by a couple wagon lengths as the heat they head into the fourth and final turn as they come down the home stretch. Here, Ben's Miller lets the thoroughbreds run and they take him across the finish line first as he takes this one wire to wire with his wheels on fire, followed by McGee and King in third. We will go to the seventh heat for the fastest time of the night. Danny Ringnett was on the one barrel, Ta Todd Baptiste on two while Bob Van Eaton was on three. And wow, back services. There's the sound of the East Alta co-op horn, and look it. Live in front of you, one of the best barrelers in the business, Todd Baptiste, wow, back services, getting it done, trying to steal the rail. Baptiste fends off Ringette, Ringette for the inside rail, taking a wagon length lead going into the back stretch, where he would get more separation, making it an easy finish towards the final stretch drive. Baptiste would cruise to a 1 minute 9 second 32 for the day money. To the 
to the top five times of the night now as we've seen hometown cowboy Chance Benzmiller comes in with the fifth and fourth best time. Jamie Lubacane non-point outfit is third with a time of 109.70. Reigning CPCA champion Wayne Knight second place with his point outfit. Only two tenths of a second in front of Knight was Todd Baptiste and his point outfit coming in first place on day one. Day two of the Dewberry Show gets underway Saturday night. The Lloydminster Titanium Reapers were in action this afternoon, taking on the Parkland Sharks. The Reapers were looking to bounce back after losing their first game of the year last weekend. The Reapers dominated start to finish, scoring seven tries, including this one from Cassidy Duke. The Sharks would get a couple of late tries on the board, but the Reapers improved to 4-1 and one on the season after taking a bite out of the Sharks, 41-12. The win moves the Reapers into first place in their division. They now have one month off before their next game on July 19th versus the Strathcona Druids. Looking for their second win in a row, the Lloydminster Extreme were up against the Edmonton Wizards this afternoon. Th three, to, three to one for the Extreme now. Nice passing from the Extreme as Cody Kappa will find Austin Laughlin out front and he would make no mistake making this game four to one. Extreme continue to light the lamp as they would pass the ball back and forth where eventually Kappel receives the pass in the slot and he slings it past the goaltender making the score 6-1. to one. Wizards now trying to cut into that extreme lead with this beautiful stretch pass from Brent Naclaw sending him all alone for the one-timer where he would find the top corner to make the score 6-2. to two. But the extreme just too much in this one. Score is 8-3 to three now and Ryan Lodke slings this one at the goaltender beating, the, beating him making the score 9-3. to three. After a couple more goals for the extreme now, how about this nifty behind the back pass from Brandon Peterson where he makes an excellent move to shake the defender and rifles that one home to give his team the 12-2 lead. The extreme dominate in this one, defeating the Wizards 17-5. To baseball now, the Northwest Prairie Pirates earned their fifth win in their last six games, beating the Saskatoon D-backs 9-7. The Pirates capitalized on five errors by the D-backs, while Cooper Olsen went the distance with six strikeouts the Pirates will have a double header at Wallace Field tomorrow afternoon with the Saskatoon Giants. Now that's all the time we have in sports. Josh Ryan has our weather details coming up. Here is New Cap Weather. Welcome back, folks. As you can see, it's been a nice, calm, sunny day outside. But over the next couple of days, it's going to get very windy with strong gusts coming mostly from the northeast. As you can see, this jet stream here moving across the prairies. This high pressure system also forcing things. Another high pressure system building up over the next 24 hours. So that's going to make things continually interesting. Moving on now to the cast, we got 23 degrees still in the Battlefords. It stayed very warm there despite slightly stronger wind than the rest of the regions. Coming out of the west, 11 overnight and 20 tomorrow with very strong gusts. Could get up to 50 kilometers per hour out of the northwest, those winds. So that's uh, some, some very windy times over there. Lakeland, 21 degrees, 11 overnight and 19 tomorrow afternoon. Again, pretty strong winds from the northwest, a low of 7 Monday evening. And then on, pardon me, on Sunday here in the midwest, 21 degrees, uh, I guess we're actually Saturday. I keep thinking Sunday today for some reason. 20 on the actual Sunday, which is tomorrow afternoon. Northwest winds of 20 to 40 kilometers there as well. And then as we get into the seven day forecast, you can see nice sunny skies on Monday with 23 degrees. Then Tuesday, 24, 23 on Wednesday, though a slight chance of precipitation. There's a little more cloud cover there than 26 on Thursday, 24 on Friday, and then 21 again on Saturday. So pretty warm temperatures all around there above the average high of this time of year at 21 degrees. And as the lows you can see as well, generally above the average low, 11, 11, 13, 13, 11 again to finish the week off. And as mentioned before, those strong winds, mostly out of the northwest on Sunday, calms down a little bit on Monday, switching a little bit more westerly. And then on Tuesday, it's going to be from the southeast, 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. And that has been your seven-day forecast.